Hey guys, today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at the NAC convertible duffel that I unboxed in a video a couple of weeks ago. I've now had an opportunity to load this out and properly test it, and in this video I'm gonna be talking about my experience using it, I'll walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, I wanna thank NAC for sending the bag for me to test out and also for partnering up for the giveaway that we announced in the unboxing video. A winner has now been selected. The giveaway is closed and I'll be posting the winner in the description for the video. I'm gonna be notifying them and also getting their shipping information so that we can work with NAC to get the bag sent over to them. So thank you to everybody who participated in the giveaway. Very excited that somebody is gonna to get to use this really cool bag and I'm hoping to do more giveaways in the future, so make sure to subscribe, stay tuned. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, the bag has a pretty modern and minimalistic vibe in my opinion. Definitely reminds me a lot of the Series 2 knack pack as far as the look. It's a versatile appearance that I think is gonna work really well in a more professional setting if you have to wear it with a nicer outfit, but it's not so overwhelmingly fashionable that I would be uncomfortable wearing it with a more casual outfit that I was gonna use for exploring a city or for traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels solidly built. The exterior fabric is a 420D nylon that feels like it's gonna hold up well to the rigors of your everyday and traveling. It also feels like it's gonna offer a nice amount of weather resistance and help keep the bag a little bit lighter than some of the more kind of robust fabrics that we've seen in other bags. The bottom is a different material. It's an 840D, I believe, nylon that's a little bit more reinforced since you'll be placing it down to kind of just help prevent against any sort of abrasion. So, you know, a nice material. It also just, you know, kind of maintains that minimal vibe on the bag. And then you of course have nice reverse coil YKK zippers all throughout. You do have the ability to lock the main YKK zipper on the primary compartment, and you also have Duraflex hardware all throughout the bag. Continuing along the outside of the bag, you have a handle at the top and on the side. These have a nice amount of padding and they also have a breathable material on the inside. It's gonna work particularly well if you have the bag compressed down to EDC mode, you can carry this like a briefcase. If you hide the straps away, as we'll take a look at in a little bit, you also have the handle at the top, which is gonna be great for picking the bag up off the ground or for placing this into an overhead storage compartment. The handles are rated to support a weight of 40 pounds, so hopefully you won't be loading this out with more weight than that. So they feel really good. I like that they're easy to grab, but they don't stick out too much or affect the appearance of the bag. And then taking a look at the capacity, at the moment I have this expanded out, so it's in travel mode. This is how you know I would load it out for you know, about a week of travel, so it can offer quite a bit of space at 40 liters. That's what the capacity is when it's fully expanded like this, so you can get a sense of just how big it will be. It does tend to stick out a little bit, so it could be awkward to wear this for a longer period of time when it's expanded out, but generally with a bag like this, my goal is to get to my hotel or somewhere as quickly as possible to be able to drop off sort of my clothes, my pack of cubes, and then have some sort of an EDC bag to use. So really like the capacity that this offers at 40 liters, very spacious. And I like that when it's expanded out, it also stands up quite nicely on its own. You can see that it's very stable because it has such a wide base. As I mentioned, I have this loaded out for travel, and that's one of the things I like about this bag a lot is that I can load it out for travel, but I still have room for my EDC items on the front. So that's kind of how I'm gonna walk through the compartments is how I have it loaded out for a trip, and then I'll show you how I would kind of transition it for EDC. Taking a look at the harness system, the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here, very similar to the Series 2 straps, so they have a pretty decent amount of padding on the inside. They have a breathable mesh material to help prevent moisture from building up. The straps also have a pretty nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. I will say that the padding on NAC straps in general is not as robust as some of the other kind of more full-fledged travel bags that we've seen from companies like Tortuga or Air, but uh, you know it's a trade-off that always has to be made with convertible bags where that could take up a lot of space, it can add extra weight, and it could be a little bit more annoying to kind of convert the bag into the duffel or briefcase mode. So that's something that you'll have to keep in mind you know, when you're kind of evaluating the straps, but in general for you know just wearing the bag through the airport, off my flight to the hotel, even when it's been packed out, the bag has felt fine to me. And then you also have the adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. 
on this duffel, you don't have the ability to add or remove any sort of a waist belt. I do think that that's offered on some of the other backpacks that they offer. Not on this one, but for this size of bag, it's not something that I would probably use. And then taking a look at the back paneling, you have a really nice amount of padding that's well distributed all throughout. It's got a memory foam kind of material here, so it's really soft on your back. Even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it's felt nice. You also have some air channels to provide you with some ventilation and airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. These also happen to be in the shape of Nax logo, which is kind of a cool touch. And then on the back paneling, you also have a luggage pass through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. And the luggage pass through does work whether you're using this expanded or compressed, which I was excited to see. In the luggage pass through, you also have a really interesting hidden compartment. I really love this idea from Knack. So this is a very hidden compartment. They won't even show you on their site where it is. So apologies for the spoilers here, but you have a hidden compartment that's gonna be a great spot to store something like your passport, a wallet, or some extra cash to just keep it hidden from pickpockets while you're walking around. And then as the name suggests, this is the convertible duffel. So you have the ability to hide these backpack straps away and use this as a shoulder bag or duffel bag, or even as a briefcase when it's in daily mode, when it's compressed down. So you, in order to hide the straps, there is these nice carabiners at the bottom that attach to some D-rings. Interesting note here is that the uh, attachments on the straps are metallic. The D-rings themselves are plastic. They are a Duraflex plastic, so it's something reliable. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break or anything like that. You can easily release them. That's why I love the carabiners that are used here. Very easy to kind of just put them away. And then you have a zippered pocket at the top where those hide. And then at this point, you can just use this as a briefcase with the handles that are provided but you also have a very well padded shoulder strap that's been included with the bag and you have d-rings on the side and it uses one of the shoulder strap d-rings you can attach it and then wear it in a variety of ways the strap that's been included has a long enough padding that it gives you flexibility whether you want to wear it on your shoulder cross body throw it behind your back so really comfortable even when the bag is expanded out you can still carry it cross body pretty well so if you want to use another EDC bag and use this as just pure of a duffel bag you do have some flexibility to do so so nice implementation there love that the shoulder strap is included and then that you can remove it if you don't want to use it jumping into the organizational options the bag has a pretty simple layout overall I would have liked to have seen maybe one or two more external compartments that's one of the things that I like about the series one and series two backpacks so most of the organization is going to be inside the main compartment you do have on the outside a water bottle pocket that's zippered so it's a little bit more hidden it's not your sort of standard stretchy water bottle compartment but it works really well I was actually impressed that I was able to fit my normal 20 ounce water bottle into the bag even when it was packed out with all of my travel stuff in there so they do a good job of distributing the volume it does take up some space from the inside but because of the size of the bag i was able to get it in and out comfortably i could probably fit something a little bit larger but then it would have taken up more space so that's something that you'll have to think about when you're packing everything out i like that this compartment is deep enough that you could leave it open if you wanted to to be able to access your water bottle or an umbrella a little bit more quickly and I like the versatility of having it as a zipper because then it can just be a regular storage compartment if you want to use it to hold a pouch or other accessories that you're going to be grabbing regularly. The next area that we're going to be taking a look at is the laptop compartment and you do have external access to your laptop. You have a vertically oriented zipper that's near the back panel and this is a really tall zipper which is nice to make it very easy to get your device in and out particularly while you're traveling this is always super helpful and one bonus with this bag is that the zipper handle and luggage pass through are all oriented the same way so when you rest this on your suitcase you can reach down and grab it and pick everything up i really like when all of these things have a similar orientation sometimes it can be awkward when you have luggage pass through here the laptop compartment is vertical so really kind of good thoughtful design here and the laptop compartment is going to be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop pretty comfortably i have my 13 inch macbook air and that fit in there very easily on the company site it says that the compartment is suspended and it's not suspended in the traditional sense so it does kind of go all the way down to the bottom so i would have liked to have seen like a true false bottom here that pulled the device up i did notice that when the bag is packed out your laptop tends to kind of stop 
a little bit above the ground just due to the nature of how everything is loaded. So it's not hitting the ground most of the time, but it can potentially go all the way down depending on how everything is loaded out. So there's a decent amount of padding. I would have liked to have seen maybe a frame sheet or some more rigidity on this padding. This is similar to some of Nack's other bags, so it still does a pretty good job, but just not as rigid as some of the other laptop compartments that we've seen, but very easy to get your device in and out of the bag and then taking a closer look at the inside it does open up pretty wide so if you happen to have a thicker device or you want, you want to use a case with your laptop to give it a little bit more protection it should be able to fit in there pretty comfortably moving into the main compartment this does have a full clamshell style opening even though it's called a duffel bag this to me reminds me more of some of the travel bags that i really enjoy using this is my preferred sort of travel bag setup so love that it's an actual clamshell style it's a little bit different than the suitcase compartment that's on the other knack packs this is definitely the way that i typically like to load bags out as i feel like it just gives me the most flexibility with the space and it provides all the visibility that I need so that I could easily organize and pack out all of my stuff. And again, 40 liters of space with this expanded version. So I was really impressed with how it was able to hold some of my EDC essentials that I might normally carry with me on top of all of my travel stuff. So that's how I'm gonna kind of walk through this compartment here, diving into these items that are laying at the top, which are some of the EDC ones that I might grab more regularly. First up, I have the Evergoods Civic Access Pouch, the one liter version with some of my just tech dongles and accessories. And then I also have the Tom Bin Ghost Well Pouch, which I have with me on pretty much every trip. And then the last pouch that I have here is a shadow pocket from GoRuff, which has some bulkier accessories. And just to kind of showcase how much I'm able to hold in this compartment, even with the travel items. Behind that, you have a divider. It's a pretty thin divider that helps separate out the travel items, but also compress those things down to keep them in place and also save a little bit on space. And I like that this divider also works as an organizational area. So you have some elastic bands at the top that are gonna be good for holding smaller accessories, anything you wanna grab quickly that you don't want falling down to the bottom. Excellent spot for everyday carry accessories such as a flashlight, which I have here, as well as a dongle so that I can connect my iPhone to an HDMI cable. And then below that, you have a larger sort of mesh compartment. I really like how see-through the mesh is here so you can get a sense for what's in the compartment. You also have a decent amount of volume here, so it's gonna work great for bulkier accessories, for pouches. Uh, can work to hold maybe uh, a hat, some gloves. In my case, I just have a deck of playing cards, and then I also have the manicure set that I typically have with me. And then the flap itself is secured with some buckles that you can adjust and really tighten down to make sure that you have a secure hold on everything that's below it and that you have a clear separation between everything in the compartment, but they're very easy to adjust and release when you wanna access this area. And below that, I have kind of my typical travel bag setup. And I have a little bit more than I normally have with me just because of the amount of space that's provided here. So I have, you know, an extra pair of shoes as I normally do, a pair of Toms. I have my Air Dot kit. And then I have the compressible packing cube from Peak Design. I have two of them. I have the smaller one here that has some shirts and other smaller clothing items. And then I have the larger compressible packing cube as well with some pants, my dress shirts, the larger items that I normally carry with me. So really excited that I was able to fit both of those packing cubes in. That's not always the case with some of the travel bags that I use. I kind of have to pick and choose. So lots of space just due to the simple layout that's offered here. It's really just a large bucket of space. So it works great with a modular setup. And then on the lid of this compartment, you have some additional organizational options. Kind of wish that this had maybe been accessible from a separate area of the bag, but still glad that it's included. This is what will allow this to work for day-to-day -day usage a little bit more is to have some of these extra areas to keep your stuff organized. So starting off at the bottom, you have a dedicated tablet sleeve. It's got a nice fleece lining on the inside. The sleeve itself isn't as rigid or padded as maybe I would have liked to have seen for a tablet protection, but it's nice that it does have that lining to help prevent against scratching. And you know, it's gonna offer a nice amount of space, easily fit my iPad mini. I think you could probably fit a larger tablet, maybe if you place it sideways, it might stick up a little bit if it's a taller one. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. Maybe not a 12 inch tablet or 11 inch tablet might be a little bit tight, um, but still nice to have this sort of dedicated area for that. And then 
you have a little lanyard with a carabiner, which is gonna be a good spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. This is removable, as I showed in the unboxing video, which I'm always a fan of. It makes it a lot more useful, in my opinion. And then at the top, you have some additional elastic bands, similar to the ones that we saw on the other side, which are gonna be, again, a great spot for items that are a little bit smaller that you grab more regularly. I actually use one of these to attach one of the pouches that I normally like to carry with me. This is a Topo Design square pouch that has a carabiner, which actually attaches really well to that band. But again, another great spot for flashlights, a multi-tool that's TSA safe, or something like a pen. I currently have the Ridge Bolt Action Pen here, uh, but it could hold a variety of accessories, a stylus. And then you have another mesh zipper compartment. Again, good volume on this, so it's gonna be able to handle bulkier items like a laptop charger, or other tech accessories, and you can easily see into the compartment. Currently what I have in here at the moment is a lot of my tech stuff. So I have my Apple Magic Mouse, I have my AirPods, I have a lightning cable to charge my phone, the power brick that I've been using a lot recently from Anchor, which is able to charge my laptop and tablet and a bunch of different devices. And then I also have a wired pair of headphones, which I typically like to have with me as a backup, especially for flights where I'm not gonna be able to use my AirPods. And then above that compartment, you have one more zippered pocket, which is gonna be a great spot for something that's a little bit more sensitive. This also has a soft fleece lining, so it's kind of the sunglasses pocket. This is where you would place them, particularly if you don't use a case. I typically have a case with my sunglasses, so I like that this is a little bit of a larger pocket, so even with my case, I was able to store it in there, and because it's at the top, I'm able to reach down and grab things from here easily. I also have a GoPro in here, so just to kind of showcase how much volume this has. But again, just a good spot for anything more sensitive like your phone, your glasses, sunglasses that you wanna just be able to grab quickly and maybe toss in here while going through TSA. And so now with the bag empty, we can take a look at what is probably my favorite part of Nax bags, which is the ability to expand and compress. This zipper that it has here will take the bag from 40 liters all the way down to 24 liters, which is a really kind of typical EDC bag size for me. I really like that size for my frame and it gives me enough space to carry my essentials without feeling super tight. And so the zipper goes all the way around, very easy to convert it into daily bag mode and then what I have been doing is actually just you know, attaching the compression straps for this divider in the middle. And then I've loaded it out with the pouches that I showed earlier, my water bottle, the laptop, and then you know I'm able to use it as a very capable EDC bag. This is sort of you know my ideal setup where I can arrive at my hotel, take all my stuff out, compress this down, go out for some meetings, go to a coffee shop to work. So just really versatile in the same way that some of Nax bags that we featured on the channel have been in the past got a little bit of a simpler layout and if you're looking for something that can really go up to a large size at 40 liters and then compress down to a daily bag size and you want something that's stylish and that's going to work well in a professional setting this is going to be one of the best options that you can check out and so to wrap up it's been a great experience testing out the NAC convertible duffel over the past couple of weeks you can currently purchase this on the company site for about $275, so it's a pretty big investment. You are getting a really versatile and unique bag that's gonna work great in a variety of situations. It has a nice feature set, but there's also gonna be some other great bags in this price range that may be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bags these made me think of were of course NAC Series 1 and Series 2 expandable backpacks. Those are still some of my favorite expandable bags that are currently on the market. I really love the more professional aesthetic that they have. The expandable functionality works great on those bags. It's a really solid EDC bag and then you can expand it out, use it for traveling. I really like the organizational options that are provided on the expandable backpacks. It has a little bit more in the way of pocketing than the convertible duffel. And you know, it just has a really nice form factor. As far as the Series 1, those are offered in a few different sizes. So if you need a little bit more capacity or a little bit less, you have some more kind of variety there. You also have some different colors that you can pick from. So if you're a fan of Nax sort of aesthetic and you want something that's expandable, that can work well in a professional setting, and maybe some more organization than what's provided here, I definitely recommend you check those out. The next bag this made me think of is the Nomadic Travel Pack, which was one of the first expandable bags that I really got a chance to test out. And it holds up great even after all these years. It's been upgraded with better materials than the original one that I had. YKK zippers, really weather resistant, sort of tarpaulin-like exterior. It's got a comfortable harness system. It expands to about 30 liters, I believe. So it's not gonna get quite as big as this bag here. 
but still, you know, it can hold enough stuff for a longer weekend trip. Collapses down to 20 liters for EDC usage. Great kind of organizational layout, good padding for your electronics. So a really versatile bag overall. I like the aesthetic of the Mac packs a little bit more, but I find that the Nomadics bags might have a little bit more weather resistance. The materials just feel more rugged in my opinion. So if you're looking for something kind of like this that expands and compresses and you don't need as much space or you're not looking for something with this type of an aesthetic, then that's gonna be a great option to consider. Another bag this made me think of is the Soul Guard Life Pack Endeavor, which we looked at pretty recently on the channel. That's another expandable bag, so it can work well for your day to day or for travel. You can get pretty big, it's comfortable to wear. It's got a little bit of a different layout in that it doesn't open up like a suitcase, it's more of a top loading bag. It also has a really interesting insert that you can pull out that kind of works as a closet. Uh, you can hang it up and organize all of your stuff. And then it's divided into two different sections. So you have your tech and work section and then your life section. So really interesting layout on that bag. A lot of great features. It comes in at a pretty similar price range to this. I think that this one feels a little bit more rugged. So, you know, the materials just feel like they're gonna hold up maybe a little bit better over the longer term. But the Soul Guard backpack has been great so far. It's got a great layout, very versatile. It doesn't have kind of the same sort of sleek look that this has so if that's you know something that's not really for you and you just want a really versatile bag then that might be another great one to consider and then the last option that i'll mention here is the patagonia mini mlc which has been one of the best minimal travel bags that i've looked at over the past year the video that i did on that has been really popular and with good reason because it's a really rugged versatile bag it comes in at about 30 liters, 26 to 30 liters. There's been some back and forth on what the actual literage is in since Patagonia changed their site. Uh, but it's a size that can hold more than enough for a longer weekend trip or even a week of travel if you pack a little bit more minimally. Uh, it has a little bit of a simpler organizational layout, but still enough pocketing to hold everything that you might need and provide access. Suspended laptop compartment. It's a pretty comfortable harness system. It includes a removable waist belt like this bag you can also convert to be used as a duffel a shoulder bag a briefcase it's got a really clever implementation where you take the waist strap out and use it as the shoulder strap for the bag so really versatile durable one of the things that people have complained about with that bag is that it has the really big logo across the front that says patagonia so not super subtle but a pretty just kind of versatile minimal bag in general and if you're you're looking for something like that you don't care as much about the expansion and you just want something that's going to work very well for minimal travel at about $200 and that's gonna be a great option to take a look at. With that being said, the NAC convertible duffel holds up really well against all those options. And if you're looking for a bag that can work well for EDC or for travel, and it's gonna offer a solid build quality and a sleek aesthetic, and it's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the NAC convertible duffel now that you've had a chance to see the full review and how it compares to some of the other expandable and minimal travel bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank NAC again for sending the bag for me to test out and for partnering up for the giveaway. And to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.